Hello and welcome to Kit's Photography. I'm Kit from Bremat Photography here in sunny South Australia. Welcome to my channel. Hello again and thanks for joining me this week. This time we're going to be doing a few different things. So I'm going to start off by talking about some cameras and then I'm going to talk about my latest trip to Monato Zoo. Great fun day, weather was perfect and it was fantastic and you'll see that in a minute. But before that, I've had a few people ask me what do I use for my filming? So because I'm going out and I'm mainly doing tutorials on how to shoot still, but at the same time I am videoing animals, wildlife, all that sort of stuff. So I've done a few different things over, over time and what I'm using at the moment is a range of different video cameras for different situations. So, for instance, sometimes anyone can do this, you can just use your phone. Easy as, really good picture, obviously not the same as a DSLR or a professional video camera, but it's still pretty good. And uh, my first couple of videos I filmed on my iPhone X and they worked out quite well. Even in very low light, they worked out really well. You can get 60 frames per second in 4K really, really easily in one of these. Now the next stop up from that would be one of these. Now this is a little Panasonic video camera. It's a 4K, it's pretty old, I've had it for quite a long time now. It shoots relatively well, so it'll do, it'll do 4K at 30 frames per second, which is not too bad, and it will do uh, 120 frames, I believe it is, uh, it, and 1080 uh, in slow motion in like a burst sort of mode, but the quality is not the best. But for just going about and doing a few things, it's not too bad, and for the technology involved, it's, it's really not too bad at all. The next level up from that, is one of these. Now this is a fully professional journalist video camera and I have been using this as well. I haven't used it for any of my published videos yet because they're on the way. This is the PWX Z90 from Sony. An excellent camera for journalism. Now this will do 4K in HDR at 30 frames per second. It'll do 1080 up to 960 frames per second and it's it's pretty versatile, but one of the best things about this are the, are the audio inputs in here. There they are, just there. And uh, they, you can get adapters which plug into things like uh, Wireless Go and all that sort of stuff really, really easily, and they work superbly. The quality of this is so good. There are uh, many, many, many options. I think it's 10 different options of video quality, but uh, um, I have it at the moment set on, on um, HDR, but you can do all the different things like all the, the, the S log and all that sort of stuff for Sony works really, really well. And some people say having a handle is a bit much, but can I tell you, it's actually really, really useful because when you're shooting, you can really hold it like this because the last thing you want to do is hold a camera like a dad at the football because you really can't hold it still enough for that and you can't get low either. So that's uh, that's the next level there. Now, one thing about this camera, which I've got to say is really, really good, is the fact that it's got ND filters built in, so that you, you can be shooting outside, you don't have to change the aperture at all, and it works really, really well. Now, the next level up from that that I use is this. This is my D850. Now, this takes superb video, only shoots up to 30 minutes at a time, but it really, 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 really shoots well. It's great for studio work, the focusing is not very good. Really, you put it on manual focus, but if you're a professional videographer, then you're used to manual focus. Um, but really, it's, it, it does a superb depth of field, and I love this camera for the video. And then you're probably asking yourself, well, what am I filming on right now? So at the moment, I'm filming on a extraordinarily long name, Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. So I'm filming this right now in ProRes at uh, 20 
five frames per second. The reason I'm doing 25, if I do it at 24, like a film, uh, the lights in my studio here go and it gets a bit trippy. So I'm doing it at 25. This is super, super high quality. And even though it has a micro four thirds sensor, it still does the 4K absolutely beautifully. I can't get over how good the quality is. And the options for it are really good. And it's Australian too, which is absolutely wonderful. But they're the things I use to film on. Really when it comes to it, the best for doing this kind of stuff is, is this one here, because you can really take it out and about. Um, this is actually set right now for no audio. So it does have a built-in microphone, but I don't use it. I do everything from up here and it records really, really well. And then at the moment, so I'm not actually recording audio onto the Black Magic there. What I'm actually doing is recording directly into my Mac using Logic Pro. And then I'm going to splice the two together later, which is on Final Cut Pro, it's really, really easy. So that's it for my discussion of cameras there. When it, when it comes to it, the only camera that I would ever use at the moment for still photography is a D850. I know people really are getting into the mirrorless cameras. I've looked at them. Um, I know they're a bit smaller. This is a pretty heavy, bulky camera. But when it comes to it, what you can do with it is amazing. And you can do the same stuff pretty much that you can do with a mirrorless camera when you do shooting video or from live view on the back. But really when it comes to it, it takes superb photographs. So yeah, that's, that's about it for this first section of of today's episode, so uh, let's get on and see some Monato Zoo. So we're here at Monato again for another lovely day. It's a beautiful, beautiful day today here at Monato. It's really worth coming down here. And I'm walking again because that's what you've got to do at Monato. You've got to walk and you get a much better view of the animals. So let's see what we can find. We trekked all the way from the visitor centre to the waterhole but this time we were just in time for the keeper talk. So we got to see some giraffes close up. Um, and spiny branches ending up sticking into them. So it's pretty cool little. Uh... So he's only a young male, so he should still grow a fair bit taller and get quite a little bit chunkier than he is at the moment. So. He's still a youngster, he'll get there in the end, but uh, he's got a pretty sweet life with all these women folk out here. <laughs> this next giraffe is called Kinky. I bet you can't guess why. When she was born, she fell on her neck and two of her vertebrae fused. It doesn't cause her any pain, but it looks a bit strange. So after going to the waterhole, we moved on to where the Tasmanian devils are. And we happened to get there just before the keeper talk. So I managed to get some really good images of the Tasmanian devil. They're always really photogenic, especially because they've been without people for a while. And uh, this time you'll see that uh, they had something to eat. The keeper had tethered some, some wallaby to a, a, a tether so it couldn't pull it away because they're pretty rough when they eat. And um, yeah, some great images this time. Absolutely fantastic images. I hope you enjoy. And um, hopefully we'll get some all three devils out here with me, but if not, we've got Morocco here. Morocco. Morocco is a four-year-old boy and he's part of 35 devils that we currently have here at Monado. Wow. Most of our devils are held off display. We've been part of a nationwide, looks like Nav here, another boy. We've been part of a nationwide recovery and breeding program for the Tasmanian Devils um, since 2007. Tasmanian Devils have so much personality. They don't live very long though, about eight years. The funny thing is, is when they're very young, they look just like a brush-tailed possum and they act in a very similar way, which is why in zoos we generally see the older ones.
We then got to see the hyenas close up. This is something which is quite rare when at Monato because generally they're quite far away. But this was a really good situation to see up close how interesting their personalities are. Decided this time to walk all the way, about the sort of six kilometres or so, to one side and then catch the bus back. And what I got was some really, really good images from inside the bus. I got right up close with the animals, and because of the fact that this bus was basically empty, I got some super, super good footage and photographs. Let's have a look. As you catch the bus into the lion exhibit, there's this sign of no bicycles allowed on the gate. I found out later this is actually an in-joke with the keepers. I got some good shots here of the lions basking in the sun and the three lionesses looking closely at their young. The cubs looking so adorable sitting in the sun. Next, the Kowalski horses, which last time we saw from a fence, but this is really up close. And some deer. And then back through the waterhole again. ostrich fluffing its feathers. Well, that's been Kit's Photography for this time. Thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate the fact that you're going to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.